Hi guys, and welcome once again to Curated Logic, where we try and up your brain game. For those who know me well, they know how much I love murder mysteries. From reading countless Agatha Christie, to playing Cluedo or Clue for those who know it as that, both as a board game and in real life with my little sister, complete with dead stuffed animals, raspberry jam as blood, always on a piece of paper just to make sure to keep things clean, and me as a teenager in heels and a dress because I flat out refused to play anyone but Mrs. Peacock, Miss Scarlet, or Mrs. White, if not all three. The point I'm trying to make is I really love murder mysteries and have probably scarred my little sister for life. So when I came across the new game Overboard by Inkle, described as many as feeling Agatha Christie-esque, it is fair to say that I was excited. Not dress up excited, but excited nonetheless. So I was a little surprised to discover that rather than solving a murder in this game, it asks you to try and get away with one. An interesting take on the murder mystery genre, but one that I think in this case didn't live up to its promise. Sometimes with games, I go into them knowing a lot about them. I am pretty sure I know what to expect thematically and story-wise. Other times, like was the case with Overboard, I am drawn in by one aspect of the game. In this case, it was it being a 1930s murder mystery set on a ship, a la my favourite Christie book, Death on the Nile. And because of this, I just dive right in knowing nothing else. What I expect from a game is for me not to have to know too much about it before I start playing. I definitely don't need things to be spelt out for me completely, but if a character on my playing has a task and the character knows what it is, I would like the game to be clear what it is I am actually meant to be doing. I felt like, at least initially, this wasn't the case with Overboard. Although many who play the game might say it was obvious from the start that the whole point of the game was for you to get away with Veronica's crime, for me, it wasn't so clear. Granted, within the first scene of the game, you get a voiceover explaining that Veronica has pushed her husband overboard. But this is then followed up with a slight contemplation as to whether or not it was a dream. In my case, my immediate reaction was to think that Veronica was innocent and I was meant to attempt to prove her so by way of exposing the real killer, with the dream sequence being explained later on. Because of this, some of the initial choices I made Veronica make were based on what I thought would be realistic choices someone who was actually innocent would choose rather than digging Veronica an unwanted early grave. I was not trying to hide or tamper with evidence or reduce suspicion, as I thought perhaps Veronica was innocent and the key was therefore playing it straight and telling the truth. But even though I went this way initially, I wasn't sure I was doing the right thing, and obviously as it turns out I wasn't, and the feeling of uncertainty that came with that was not enjoyable. And so once I found out and realised what the actual point of the game was, I felt like I had wasted time that could have been saved had it been more clear from the beginning that Veronica knew she was guilty and getting her off was the entire point of playing. Just a little contemplative side note with this. It is interesting how I immediately thought that, given it is a murder mystery style game, the main character would be innocent. I have read enough detective fiction to know that this is not always the case, but still, the cliché took hold. So, despite me finding that the initial part of the game was unsettling, 
I do appreciate that the game is attempting to produce a somewhat fresh take on the genre and it uses people's preconceptions of murder mysteries to do so. But whether the initial confusion was intended to question tropes within the genre or not, I still stand by the feeling that the initial lack of clarity on the overarching mission for the game took away more than it added. As I said before, the clarity I desire does eventually come when, after about 20 minutes or so of initial play, or at least that was as long as it was for me, the Christie-esque calling of everyone together to reveal the murderer happens, and it is revealed whether you have successfully got Veronica off, or if she is off to federal prison. When this happened so quickly for the first time, my initial thought was, what the hell is going on? Which, after feeling pretty lost for the 20 minutes before that, felt par for the course. It is then that the actual premise of the game, if you weren't previously aware of it, is laid out. As I said, the main scenario takes place on a ship that is travelling across from England to New York. When Veronica initially wakes up, you have about 8 hours in game time before the ship will dock, in which time you have to do whatever is necessary to frame someone else or pin the murder as a suicide in the eyes of those on board, as well as complete a series of tasks that will help improve the outcome for Veronica. If you do not complete all necessary tasks to get the best outcome and complete the game on the first attempt, which trust me, you won't, or, and I don't think you can, then after Veronica is arrested or set free, she will wake up again in her cabin with the knowledge she has learned from any previous attempts and you are to play the same eight hours again and again, constantly changing whatever you need to achieve a better result. Funnily enough, this is where the lack of communication about exactly what you are meant to do works. You are not made aware of every overarching task you need to complete in order to get the best outcome from the beginning. They are gradually exposed to you as you complete the task before it. What I like about this is that it then makes you look at the entire scenario differently, adding an extra level of thinking and logic to your gameplay that helps keep the fact that you are playing through the same 8 hours again and again somewhat fresh. But only somewhat. Although I understand why it has been made to be so fast, I personally think that playing through the scenario is too quick. I never really felt that I was getting enough of a story or enough of a feel for what I was doing as Veronica. It felt like every action or phrase had massive implications on the result as there was never enough time to do a lot of little things and influence the game subtly. Granted, there are thousands of combinations of these actions and discussions, so the subtleness comes from changing one or two things at a time, but then you are just playing through the same scenario again and again, fast forwarding through already heard speeches and done actions in order to get to the things you actually want to change. Plus, a number of times I accidentally made the wrong choice and I knew, because of how major each decision was in the game, I had to start the scenario again. Not only is this very quickly boring, but it means that subsequent plays through the scenario are often then much shorter than what your initial 20 minutes of play was, as you have sped through most of it. With this also, the options for talk and decisions you are presented with often seem quite arbitrary and limited, leaving not much room for player creativity in how they could play or ideas they could implement to help exonerate Veronica. If the scenario had been longer, had more to play with and do that could influence the result in slighter ways, one way or the other, a greater feeling of player influence could have been built. I would have definitely felt less that an accidental decision, however innocuous, could cease my ability to influence the result. And I would have felt less like player impact was overshadowed by obviously pre-planned scenarios. 
It also would have helped draw me into the murder mystery genre. Although many popular murder mystery novels, like those of Agatha Christie, have an old world simplicity in how they were written, they also have a complexity about them and draw the reader in by taking their time. Even though the premise of Overboard flipped the idea of murder mystery on its head, it still is obviously set within this genre. And losing this complexity of story and the time it took to tell it reduced the feeling of truly being in the genre setting it was meant to be in. I so desperately wanted this to be embraced more by the game because if it had, I definitely would have been more invested in the scenario and therefore, obviously, the game itself. A couple of other points to make about the story in relation to gameplay. Although you could speed through a discussion that you have had before, there was no button to skip it entirely. This would have been a welcome addition as, like I said, there were times where I only wanted to change one or two things and did not want to have to play through the entire thing again. What would have been even better would have been if you could choose from where to pick up one of your last playthroughs, but to be honest now I am probably asking for too much. Also, the ship must have been huge and passengers must have been very slow talkers because sometimes it would take 20 minutes to get to another section of the ship that seemed really not that far away on the diagram or 20 minutes to have a conversation that should have lasted about five. This discrepancy in timing only added to the feeling of being rushed through the game and was something I really did not enjoy at all. Having not spoken so glowingly about the game thus far, I do want to touch on some points that I enjoyed. First, the graphics. As simple as they are, they suit the theme of the game well and are well done. They were another thing that drew me in initially to want to play the game and often made me happy throughout. The same can be said of both the music and the acting work. Everything felt apt for the setting and time in history as to feeling and didn't distract or grate at all, which can definitely happen if you are playing through the same scenes over and over again. I also really like the combination of dark and blue humour within the game. I wasn't expecting it at all, but it really made me chuckle a couple of times. It added a sense of levity that complemented the aesthetics and general feel of the game superbly. With these components of the game working so well together, it left me with a feeling that the people that worked on the game probably had a really good time working together and did so cohesively, and that just flowed on through to how I felt. Finally, although I have touched on a number of negatives read the story, I must say that I really did like the premise of the game. That being, you are attempting to get yourself off a crime that you did indeed commit within the world of a murder mystery genre. As was clear from my initial playing of the game, having this spin on such a well-known genre forces the brain to think differently and produce a definite feeling of stretching one's brain. This was a feeling I liked, but as I said, unfortunately due to the speed of the story was not one that went far enough or was really capitalised on. For Overboard, I give a 6 out of 10. I am definitely interested to see what Ink will do next, and there were a number of good elements about the game. I have even committed myself to do a walkthrough, meaning I have to go back and play it through until I win every badge I can. As is support to my relatively low scoring of the game, the thought of doing said walkthrough doesn't bring me a massive amount of joy, but rather brings anticipation of probable boredom and feelings of obligation. That may sound harsh, but it is unfortunately true. Alright, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this review of Overboard by Ingle. If you have any games or puzzles you want me to review or do a walkthrough for, you can leave a comment below and I will add it to my list. If I like the look of it, of course. And if you want to continue up in your brain game, feel free to like, subscribe or support us on any of our other socials listed here and in the description below. 
I hope wherever you are in the world, you are keeping safe and happy. Until next time, keep up in your brain game and have fun. See ya.